Hello, I'm Richard De Silva with Defence IQ for Counter IEDs 2010 here in London, and I'm with Lieutenant Colonel Jason Smallfield of the US Army. Uh, Colonel, you've, been, uh, you've had operational experience in this area. Uh, could you just start by telling us about your work with the US National Guard? Uh, I'm a training support battalion commander uh, underneath 1st Army of uh, Force Comp. Uh, our basic mission is to train National Guard and Reserve post-mobilization as they move en route to Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, my specific mission is training counter IED to those forces. Great. And can you tell us about the actual training structure? Uh, how long, for instance, it would take to take an, uh, someone in the National Guard and get them fully operational? Uh, looking at the entire process for U.S. Army, National Guard, and Reserve Forces, uh, it begins pre-mobilization, which uh, those individual units are responsible for. And that's their one weekend a month, uh, two weeks a year, uh, annual training that they conduct. Uh, within the Ar uh, U.S. Army system, they'll get mobilization orders, which is 12 to 18 months prior to their mission. <coughs> they'll start training up for that mission, and then prior to deployment, uh, they conduct what's called post-mobilization. So they'll come to uh, one of the main First Army hubs. I'm based out of Fort Hood, and then uh, we'll conduct post-mobilization training prior to they're going to Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, it's based upon type of unit, it's based upon category of unit, uh, and it's also based upon mission. Uh, so, for example, the way ForceCom breaks it up, there's four categories of units. Category 1 never leaves the FOB. Uh, category 2 stays inside the FOB, does occasional missions outside the wire. Category 3, majority of their missions outside the wire. Category 4 is a land-owned unit. Um, and then based upon that, that equals time during post mode. Uh, obviously, if you're a land-owning unit, it goes up to 45 days of training, where a Category 1 unit may only receive 10 to 14 days of post-mobilization training. Okay. And in terms of uh, the U.S. Army's perspective, um, is the way forward, uh, do you think, in actually looking for new ideas, or are we essentially rolling along with the strategy as it stands? Uh, as we've discussed in this conference, it takes a network to defeat a network. Um, the solution, uh, there's no silver bullet, number one, and it's dynamic, so it's constantly changing. Uh, at the strategic level for TRADOC and ForceCom, uh, the key thing is getting the solutions that we've had in the recent past one to five years um, out of the supplemental process and into the budgetary process. So that's at the strategic level. At the operational level, all the different cats and dogs that uh, are in the civilian and the military uh, that are deployed in the military, getting that information that's out there to the training base so that way the training that we conduct is by subject matter experts who have operational experience and who have current information. Uh, from a training perspective, it doesn't do me any good to train Iraq 2007 when it's Iraq 2010. So we try to keep our program of instruction no more than three months out of date. And then at the tactical level, uh, get into the commonality of training. So the training experience, no matter what unit you are and where you train within the United States, there's some sort of standard that's been defined. Uh, so that way there's commonality of language, commonality of equipment, commonality of experience. So that way it becomes more integrated uh, when they're in theater and then therefore more easily employed. Fantastic. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.